in the last class, that means Monday, we have talked about um, the four basic process activities. Do you remember the four activities? We can, yeah, we can create design and implementation for the development and the specification. We can also create requirements. Also, we say that the real software processes are interleaved sequences of technical, collaborative, and managerial activities with the overall goal of software processes. And the overall goal is specifying, designing, implementing, and, and testing our software. Also, in the last Monday, we have talked about how to cope with change. We say that there are two approaches that may be used to reduce the cost of rework. Um, do you remember? Uh, change avoidance and change. Yeah, exactly. Change avoidance and uh, change tolerance. These are two approaches to reduce the cost of rework. And then we have two ways of coping with change and change. Uh, yeah, we for, we have focused on two ways of coping with change and changing system requirements. As Kaya said, uh, to to uh, allow the change avoidance, we may use the system prototyping, and for um uh, for the change avoidance and the change tolerance, we we may use. The, the incremental de delivery. Okay, thank you, Kaya. These are what we have uh, introduced in the uh, Monday. Also, we have, yeah, near the, the end of the class, we have talked about a spiral model. As we say, this model is really used. Now, we are talk about a modern generic process, which is the rational unified process. And uh, we can have the, the abbreviation RUP for this process. Here, the rational unified process, it is an example of a modern process, generic process derived from the work on the UML and the associated process. We may call it RUP and for an uh, abbreviation. This process, it brings together aspects of the three generic process models as we discussed before. The, do you remember the three generic process models? Yeah, uh, Roy is correct for waterfall, uh, waterfall model, incremental development, and reuse-oriented uh, uh, reuse development. Thank you, thank you, Roy. Yeah, perfect. For the three generic um, process models, so this process, the rational unified process, it brings together elements from all of the generic process models. And it, it illustrates good practice in specification and design and supports prototyping and incremental de delivery. That's why we consider the rational unified process as a good example of a hybrid process model. Normally, we describe this process from three perspectives. The first one is a dynamic perspective that shows phases over time. And the second one is a static perspective that shows process activities. The third one is a proactive perspective that suggests good practice to be used during the process. Here, these are three aspects, uh, three perspectives. We will see them in uh, detailed in introduction. Here, this figure shows the phases in the RUP. We see in this process, it is a phased model that identifies four, sub four discrete phases in the software process the inception elaboration construction and the transition however unlike the waterfall model where phases are equated with the process activities here these phases are more 
closely related to business rather than technical concerns. As we see in the waterfall model, there, the, those faces are related with uh, more technical concerns like development, validation, etc. And here, these faces are more re uh, more closely related to business. Yeah, we'll see these uh, faces in detail. The first one is the inception. The goal of this phase inception is to establish the business case for the system. Here, we should identify all external entities, people and um, that means people and systems. These entities will interact with the system and define these interactions. Then we use this inception, this information to assess the contribution that the system makes to the business. If the contribution is minor, then the project will may be cancelled after this phase. So it's like with this inception, we will know if it is worthy or not to continue the software. The second phase is the elaboration. The goals of the elaboration, the objective are of this elaboration phase is to develop an understanding of the problem domain and the system architecture. That means we need to establish an architectural framework for the system, develop the project plan and identify key project risks. And after complementing this phase, normally we have a requirement model for the system. And this requirement model may be uh, maybe some, yeah, uh, maybe, perhaps it will be a architectural description, a development plan for the software, or also uh, maybe a set of uh, UML diagrams, like use cases. This is for this elaboration phase. Then we have the construction phase. For the construction phase, it involves system design, programming, and testing. That's uh, the content of uh, this construction phase. And uh, part of the system are developed in par uh, parallel and integrated during this phase. After complementing this phase, normally we should have a working software system and associated documentation that is already that is ready for delivery to users so after this phase of construction we will have the phase of transition this is the final phase of the of this process and it is concerned with deploying the system from the development community to the user community that means we will make it or, uh, in a real environment, in its operating environment. It's like the delivery to the uh, to users. And as we see in this, oh, sorry, where I have put it, sorry, here. As we see in, in this figure, we have two ways to support the iterations in the process. We have separated different phases here, and we have a loop like this here too. Now we will see these two kinds of iterations within the process. Here, the first iteration is the in-phase iteration. That means each phase is iteratively, is iterative with results developed incrementally. And another iteration is the cross-phase iteration because, uh, as shown by the loop in the um, process model, the whole set of phases may be enacted incrementally. So this is the dynamic view of this process. Now we will see its static view of the process. The static view of this process 
focuses on the activities that take place during the development as we call them at uh, yeah on um, flow workflows in the first that description here we have described the core engineering and the support flow works in a table like the flow the workflow of business modeling that means the business processes are modeled using business use cases the requirements the analysis and design the implementation testing deployment configuration and the change management project management environment you see these workflows they are separate and um, these are static workflows in the rational unified process we say we have uh, three perspectives for this process a dynamic perspective shown by the faces a static perspective shown by the workflows and a practice perspectives for the practice perspectives that means this process describes good software engineering practices that are recommended for use in systems development we have six fundamental best practices recommended here the first one is to develop software iteratively as plan increments of the system they are based on customer priorities and normally we develop and deliver high the highest priority system features we deliver them the earliest in the development process this is a, a good practice of the process the second one is the manage requirements explicitly document customer yeah we um, document our requirements and we keep track of changes to these requirements that means we should analyze the impact of change on the system before accepting them uh, do you rem remember we say that as cust uh, yeah customers may change their requirements gradually and when they ask for change we need to evaluate if the change yeah if it is practical or not to change it if it is practical then we may accept it but if the requirements are too impractical we can uh, we should refuse it else will create some problems for us later and the third good practice of this process is to use component-based architectures as we uh, organize the system architecture as a set of reusable components and the fourth one is the visually model software we use graphical UML models to represent static and dynamic views of the software. We have talked about this in practice before too. And the fifth one is to verify software quality. We should, in, you know, we should be sure that the software meets organizational quality standards. And then we should control changes to software. Manage changes using 
a change management system and the configuration management procedures and tools. These are good practices of this process. However, this process is not suitable process for all types of development. It represents an approach that potentially combines the three generic process models as we have discussed before. So this process is, um, yeah, it's important, but it's not the best choice for all types of development. Now, in this chapter, uh, yeah, these are the contents for the second chapter. And for this part, we have said that the processes should be should include activities to cope with change. This may involve a prototyping phase that helps avoid poor decisions on requirements and design. As we say, to cope with change, we have two ways, prototyping and incremental delivery. Here is the first way. And then the second way is that processes may be structured for iterative development and delivery and delivery so that changes may be made without disrupting the system as a whole. It is for the uh, incremental delivery. And we say that the rational unified process is a modern generic process model that is organized into phases. We have four phases in this process, the inception, elaboration, construction, and the transition. Okay, this is uh, all the contents for the second chapter. So do you have some questions till here? The third chapter, talks about the agile software development. And in the beginning of the second chapter, we have said that software processes are categorized as two processes. Do you remember which two processes? Oh, how many chapter chapters? Um, here, normally we have uh, in total for this semester, as we have 60, 59, we, normally we have nine chapters. And uh, yeah, software processes. Are categorized yeah okay so kaya you are right thank you very much kaya agile and plan driven um processes so here we are talking about the agile process uh, software development and the objective of this chapter is to uh, introduce the agile software After reading this chapter, normally we should understand the rationale for agile software development methods, the agile manifesto, and the differences between agile and plan driven development. We should also know that the key practices in extreme programming and how these relate to the general principles of agile methods. Also, we need to understand the Scrum approach to agile project management. We should be aware of the issues and the problems of scaling agile development methods to the development of large software systems okay we will talk about these um, later and now we will see the topics covered in this chapter the first one 
is to is the agile the first one is the agile uh, uh, yeah yeah the first one is the introduction to the agile methods and the second is the plan driven and agile development the third topic is the extreme programming the fourth one is the agile project management and the fifth one is the scaling agile methods now we are uh, begin by the first one the agile methods when we say that the soft the development of software is agile sometimes we can, we may also think of, uh, think of the rapid development and the delivery of software and now the uh, rapid development and delivery often it is the most critical requirement for software systems and oh uh, wait yeah for some custom uh, customers it is the most important requirement why here we have listed the two uh yeah two um, two re important reasons the first one business operates in a fast changing requirement and impossible to produce a set of stable software requirements as we know that now uh, we have a global rapidly changing environment and businesses they have to respond to new opportunities and markets respond to changing economic conditions and the emergence of competing products and services so we should uh businesses they need us to evolve or to deliver the software rapidly too second reason is that software is a has no, yeah that's why we say software has to evolve quickly to reflect changing business needs as it is part of almost all business operations So we need to develop new software quickly to take advantage of new opportunities and to respond to competitive pressure. So we have to design our rapid de software development process to produce useful software quickly. As we know, usually the software is not developed as a single unit, but it is developed as a series of increments. And each increment includes new system functionality. Although when we want to develop rapid software we may have different approaches these approaches they share some fundamental characteristics like what is written here the first characteristic is that the processes of specification design and implementation are interleaved there is no detailed system specification and design documentation is minimized or generated automatically by the programming environment used in, uh, and the user requirements document only defines the most important characters characteristics of a system The second characteristic of this approach is that the system is developed as a series of version, versions with stakeholders involved in version evaluation. As we know that users and other 
system stakeholders. They are involved in specifying and evaluating each version. And they may propose changes to the software and new requirements that should be implemented in a later version of the system. So uh, this is the second characteristic. And the third characteristic is that user interfaces are often developed using a an integrated development environment and a graphical tool set. In fact, the system user interfaces, often we develop them using our iterative, an interactive development system, which allows the interface design to be quickly created by drawing or placing icons on the interface. The system may then generate a web based interface for a browser or an interface for a specific, specific platform such as Microsoft Windows. So these are three char spatial characteristics for the development of rapid software. I think yeah, in fact, these three characteristics, they are related strongly too. You see, the first one is that the person, um, the activities are interleaved, as we say, it is, uh, it is, normally it is incremental delivery. Also, uh, and the second character we talk about the involvement of uh, stakeholders and uh, stakeholders as we know the stakeholders they evolve their uh, requirements and very uh, and validation of the system with developers they may give some advices for each version and these advices may be involved in the next version so this is the first the second characteristic the third one is that um uh, normally we use our integrated development environment or and a and graphical tool set to facilitate the design of user interfaces in this way the development of the software can be more rapid Okay, uh, on these uh, characteristics, do you have a clear uh, idea? And in fact, agile methods are incremental development methods. And here, the increments are small and typically new releases of the system are created and made available to customers every two or three weeks or other frequency. These are some introduction to rapid software development and the agile software development. Now we, yeah, we'll see the history of the agile methods. In fact, in the, in the, in the 1980s, and early 1990s, there was a widespread view that the best way to achieve better software was through careful project planning. But during this period later, gradually, developers are more and more dissatisfied with the overhead involved in software design methods. That means all should be through careful project planning. And this dissatisfaction has led to the creation of agile methods. And that means, uh, as we say, during this period, uh, 1980s and 1990s, uh, most developers think that uh, we need to plan 
carefully the project before de uh, before de developing it. And this idea, uh, that, that means the overhead. You see, like plan driven, uh, we need to make a precise plan before uh, starting to complete to develop it. And this, yeah, this creates some, for somebody, perhaps it's like uh, bureaucratic because we, uh, we may ask plenty of documentations, uh, pl plenty of things like this. Yeah. So for the, uh, and then we create, we have the creation of agile methods. For the agile methods, we have several, yeah, we have several characteristics for the agile methods. This, uh, uh, these agile methods allow the development team to focus on the code rather than the design. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, what they the, uh, over here ha has and some documentation. The second characteristic is that agile methods they are based on an iterative approach to software development. They rely on an incremental approach to software specification, development, and delivery. They are best suited to application development where the system requirements usually change rapidly during the development process. And the third one is that these agile methods are intended to deliver working software quickly and evolve this quickly to meet changing requirements. Yeah, as we say, new and changed requirements may be included in later iterations of the system. So with these agile methods, it is uh, more, it can make the development of the software more quickly. Okay, uh, have a break of 10 minutes and I have noted the attendance for you. Here we have talked about the history of agile methods, how it is created, and then the characteristic of the characteristics of uh, these agile methods. In fact, these agile methods they aim to reduce overheads that means yeah overheads in the software process and to be able to respond quickly to changing requirements without excessive rework in fact uh, i like uh, asked by roy the overheads it's also related to the ex excessive rework because with the agile methods we can cut down on process bureaucracy by avoiding work that has dubious long-term value. And we can also eliminate the documentations that will probably never be used. That's why we say we may also, we, may, we, may, we can reduce the overheads without excessive rework. Here, this figure shows the principles, the principles of agile methods. Although these agile methods are all based around the notion of incremental development and delivery. Um, in fact, these agile methods, they propose different processes to achieve the goal. And here, uh, the principles they have in common. In fact, different agile methods instantiate these principles in different ways. Uh, these principles include the customer involvement, the incremental delivery, people not process, embrace change, maintenance, and simplicity. Yeah. You can read it after, and then if you have some questions, don't hesitate. Um, yeah, don't hesitate. In fact, 
I tell my sir, they and they are very you successful for some types of uh, system develop development. For example, the product environment where a software company company is developing is developing a small or medium sized product for sale. Um, as for a small and or medium sized product, the agile method can be more efficient. The second case is custom system development within a, a, an organization, because clear here we have a clear commitment from the customer to become involved in the development process and in this custom system development there are not a lot of external rules and the regulations that affect the software so in this kind of development agile method is also very convenient although this confirms the advantage of agile methods because of these con focus on small small tightly integrated teams there are also some problems in scaling agile methods to large systems and yeah in practice the principles underlying agile methods are sometimes difficult to realize we have um we may see these uh, problems the first it can be difficult to keep the interest of customers who are involved in the um, process. Uh, although the idea of customer involvement in the development process is an attractive one, that means um, the customers will communicate very frequently with developers. But this and the success of this process it depends on having a customer who is willing and able to spend time with the development team and who can re represent all system stakeholders and frequently is difficult the customer representatives they are subject to other pressures and they cannot usually take full part in the software development the second problem is that team members may be unsuited to the intense involvement that characterizes agile methods as we say um yeah it it has some points in common with the first one also individual team members may not have suitable personalities for the intense involvement that is typical of agile methods and therefore therefore these members not interact well with other team members. And the third problem is prioritizing changes can be difficult where there are multiple stakeholders, especially in systems for which there are, yeah, uh, with this multiple stakeholders. Pardon? As we know, each stakeholder may give different priorities to different changes, so it can be difficult for this prioritizing changes. And the fourth problem is that maintaining simplicity requires extra work. Being under pressure from delivery schedules the team members they may not have time to carry out desirable system in simplifications and the fifth problem is that contracts may be a problem as with other approaches to iterative development in fact many organizations especially large companies they have spent years changing their culture their culture so that processes are defined and allowed it is um, it would be really difficult for them to move for a uh, move to a working model in which processes are informal and defined by development teams 
It is also complementary to the uh, to the advantage of agile methods. In fact, most organizations spend more on maintaining existing software than they do on new software development. A huge amount of software engineering effort goes into the maintenance and evolution of existing software systems. And there are only a small number of experience reports on using agile methods for software maintenance. We have two questions that we need to consider when considering, uh, uh, yeah, when thinking of agile method and maintenance. The first one is that are systems that are developed using an agile approach maintainable given the emphasis in the development process of minimizing formal documentation? And, and the second one is that can agile methods be used effectively for evolving a system in response to customer change requirements? And for the first question, as we know, formal documentation, this one, it is supposed to describe the system and make it easier for people changing the system to understand. In practice, formal documentation is often not kept up to date and so it cannot accurately reflect the program code that's why agile methods they are uh, they argue that it is a waste of time to write this documentation and that the key to implementation implementing maintenable maintainable, maintainable uh, software is to produce high quality readable code so um, with agile practices we emphasize the importance of writing well structured code and investing in effort in code improvement that's why for agile methods the lack of documentation should not be a problem in maintaining systems development and for the second question can agile methods be used effectively for evolving a system in response to customer change requests? Agile practices, um, yeah, as used in the maintenance process itself, they are likely to be effective whether or not an agile approach has been used for system development. Yeah, and incremental delivery design for change and maintaining simplicity. All these make sense when software is being changed. And the other problem that is likely to arise is maintaining continuity of the development team. As the original development team cannot be maintained um, in most time. We know that agile methods they rely on team members understanding perspective, uh, understanding the aspects of the system without having to consult documentation. This is the um, as documentation is uh, our next job work for agile methods. They think it's um, perhaps it's not a uh, it's not necessary. Then they have not so many documentation. But if a natural development team is broken up, then the implicit knowledge without documentation, it is lost and it may be very difficult for new team members to build up the same understanding of the system and its components. So uh, with these problems and advantages, supporters of agile methods they have proposed a hybrid approach where agile methods incorporate some techniques from plant-driven development. And perhaps this is the best way forward. Now we will see plant-driven and agile development. As we know that 
Agile approaches to software development consider design and implementation to be the central activities in the software process. They incorporate other activities such as requirements, elicitation, and testing. Um, they incorporate these activities into design and implementation. By contrast, a plan-driven approach to software engineering, it identifies separate stages in the software process with the outputs associated with that stage. As we know, yeah, in a plan-driven approach, we have separate development stages and we have clearly the outputs at the input of the next stage. The outputs from one stage are used as a basis for develop for planning the following process activity. And it is not necessary, it is not necess necessarily waterfall model. It can be plan driven or incremental development. And in a plan driven approach, iteration may occur within activities with the formal document doc documents used to communicate with stages of the process. For example, the requirements will evolve and ultimately a requirement specification will be produced. And this is then an input to the design and implementation process. Yeah, as we say for the agile uh, development, specification, design, implementation and testing, they are interleaved and the outputs from the development process are decided through a process of negotiation during the software development process. These are the difference of these two developments. And this figure shows exactly the distinctions between plan-driven or plan-based approach and the agile approaches to system specification. In fact, most software projects include practices from plan-driven and agile approaches. To decide on the balance between a plan-driven or plan-based and an agile approach, we have to answer a range of technical, human, organizational pro, uh, questions. Yeah, as we say, uh, most projects include elements of plan-driven and agile processes. We propose a hybrid process. So to balance uh, these two approach, the first question to be answered is that, is it important to have a very detailed specification and design before moving to implementation? Okay, what, what do you think of this question? Why we need this question to balance between a plan-based and a Niger approach? Yeah, we focus on this question now. We need this question because all projects are not the same. Some may have pre-existing queries that need solving and for others queries may write as we go on. Yeah, yeah, Roy, you are, uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, and here, if we give a, yeah, an exact, an exact answer, you see here for this question, we may we may reply by yes or no, y yes or no. Yes, it is important to have a very detailed specification and the design before moving to implementation. If the the answer is yes, then it's better to choose which approach. No, <laughs> sorry, Roy, it's uh, it's not my. It, uh, I think there is some misunderstanding here um, for this question. The importance of having a detailed specification and design, it depends on different projects. Some software, for some software system, it's, it's very important to have a detailed specification and design. But for others, perhaps, the specification and design is not very, very important. So the answer may be yes or no, but in different situations, we may need different approaches. 
That's why we need to ask this question to decide which approach we will use. We will use agile or plant-driven approach. Is it much clearer? Much more clear? Okay, I'm modifying my answer. No, not always. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, both. Uh, we may we may answer this by yes or no. But now, my question is: If the answer is yes, we we the better use a pro uh, agile approach or plan driven approach. If we need a very detailed specification and design before moving to implementation, then it's better to use agile approach or it's better to use a plan driven approach. Even if the answer is yes, we should use the mix of the two, because I think no matter how planned the approach is, there is always something that will go wrong in software development. Yeah, you are, uh, you are right. Yeah, you are right. Um, even the answer is yes, we may have some, um, some evolution of the system and then we may take some different uh, yeah we may come back uh, to use the agile approach yeah yeah your second your second answer your second complementation it is mm, very good it's always better to give details and specification and we can use plan driven yeah. In fact, this indicates that a detailed specification and design can be satisfied in plan driven approach. But with a agile approach, it will be difficult to have uh, this uh, detailed specification and design. Yeah, that's why uh, this question is important for uh, the balance between these two approaches. And then we have a second question. Is an incremental delivery where you deliver the software to customers and get back get rapid feedback from them realistic? So for the why this question is important to decide whether we use a plan driven or a Nigel approach. Yeah, uh, yeah you, you are, you are um, totally uh, right. For an incremental delivery, this operation, that means we get rapid feedback from them, is really realistic. But the, um, I'm sorry, perhaps I'm not clear uh, with the question. What I want to uh, discuss with you is that with this question, how we can decide uh, whether it's better to use agile approach or plan driven approach. You see, with this question, we may have two situations. For some, for uh, yeah, in some situations, the an incremental delivery is realistic. That means we can have some we yeah we can periodically deliver the software to customers and we can get rapid feedback from customers this is one situation another situation is that there um, the an incremental delivery is not realistic 
either we uh, either we cannot deliver the software to customers um, regularly or we cannot get feedback rapidly from them that's why we have two situations and in these two situations uh, which one is better for plan driven approach which one is better for agile approach yeah 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 uh yeah yeah you you get it right that mm -hmm. means here uh for the first question if it is important then it's better to use a plan driven approach as with agile approach we can uh yeah we have no there we, we yeah we don't have very detailed specification and design in most of most cases and for the second question if an incremental delivery is realistic it's better to consider using agile approach else we use the um, plan driven approach is it clear uh thank you it, um, we uh, no, it, so the first two questions is just uh, for pr um for explaining then we have other questions the third one how large is the system that is being developed why we, when we uh, uh, why we need to ask this question to balance from um, balance between these two approaches yeah uh, for example a small system or um yeah a small system may be a very simple uh application and a big system like a bank system or uh, yeah a big system a large system um so for it's a large system, then we need to use a plan driven approach. Yeah. Because it's it's a more um established infrastructure. And yeah. then if it's a scale, then we use the agile approach because we are still growing and then we need the incremental developments. Yeah, perfect. That's right. Uh, per, uh, yeah, uh, you are totally right, uh, Kaya. And I may ask for the difference between these two approaches. Um, it's like what Kaya had said uh, here. In fact, agile methods are most effective when system can be developed with a small co-located team who can communicate communicate informally because. Um, as we say, for agile methods, we most of the time we don't keep the formal documentation regularly, and we uh, we can make up we can make new versions rapid rapidly with the agile approach. But for some large systems that require larger development teams a plan driven approach may have to be used because plan driven driven approach have decide have uh, determined the structure the specification all these things clearly at the beginning uh, before really developing uh, the system that's why we need this question to decide which approach to use and the difference between these two approach is also can also be shown by these questions i mean and that's why bank systems are usually years old <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we have other questions the first one what type of system is being developed here Mm, okay, I will answer this question. This, uh, as we know, uh, we know systems that require a lot of analysis before implementation, they usually, yeah, these kind of systems usually need a fairly detailed design to carry out this analysis. For example, we may uh, some yeah we may have some real time system they they are with complex timing requirements in this way like the requirements are very important so 
a plan-driven approach may be best in these circumstances. Okay, and the fifth one, what is the expected system lifetime? Um, the expected system lifetime, that means we may have long lifetime system and short lifetime systems. For long lifetime systems, they may require more design documentation to communicate the original intentions of the system developers to the support team. As we know, if it is a long time system, um, yeah, if the expected system lifetime is long, then the development group may be changed. So it's better to have some um some design some precise design documentation and supporters of uh, agile methods they say that the documentation is frequently not kept up to date and it is not of much use for long-term system maintenance so here if the expected system lifetime is long, then it's better to use plan-driven approach, else we can use the, the agile approach. And the sixth one, what technologies are available to support system development? For this question, um, As we know that agile methods, they rely on some tools to keep track of an evolving design. They don't have many documentations to keep track. So if we are developing a system with our integrated development environment, uh, IDE, that does not have, a, have good tools for program visualization and analysis then we may need more design documentation that means we may need uh, the plan driven approach and the seventh question is how is the development team organized yeah if the development team um is distributed or we may have uh, some members for, from outside then it's better to develop design documents to communicate across the development team. In this way, we may need to plan in advance what the, uh, that means we use a plan driven approach. And then the eight, eighth question, are there cultural issues that may affect the system development? Yeah, uh, as we know that traditional engineering organizations they have a culture for plan based and plan driven ap approach. And plan driven approach is like the norm in engineering. And this usually requires some design documentation rather than informal knowledge used in agile appro um, approaches. So if there are cultural issues that may affect the system development we need a plan driven approach and the ninth question how good are the designers and the programmers in the development team okay this question as we said before the agile approach require higher skill levels than plan driven approach because the programmers in plan driven approach they simply translate our detailed design into code they have already a very precise design then they translate it directly to code in plan driven approach but if we have a team with relative so if we have a team yeah with relatively low skilled levels perhaps we it's better to use plan driven approach else we can use agile approach and then the last question is that is the system subject to external regulation 
if our system has to be approved by our external regulator, then we may probably be required to produce detailed documentation because, yeah. Uh, so it's better to choose the, the plan-driven approach if the system is subject to external regulation. And in fact, the issue of whether a project can be labeled as plan-driven or agile, it is not very important. The primary concern of buyers of a, of a software system is whether or not they have an executable sof software system that corresponds to their needs and they can do some useful things for the individual user or the organization. And in, in practice, most companies use, as Roy said, a hybrid um, approach of uh, agile and plan driven. Okay. Uh, if in our group there are not many, uh, that means, yeah. We cannot totally understand our program uh, rapidly. In this way, it's better to have some documentation by side, uh, yeah, uh, some documentation clearly written. In that way, we, uh, we can have some support to, to understand and then develop the code. That's why we say it's better to uh, choose the plan driven approach if we, if yeah if if the programmers are not familiar yeah we can say that because agile for agile approach um programmers most programmers they keep in mind their ideas the process of development all these things they keep no uh, yeah mm, they have they, as they don't have too much documentations, they need to use their own, um, yeah, they... Also, you see, with Agile approach, as we don't have a documentation, perhaps even some uh, algorithms, they have to be designed by the, by, by the programmers. And then if there are some, some problems or some bugs, programmers need to uh, uh, go through the hole to check. But for um, I, for plan-driven approach, as we have the, documenta do, the documentation, the algorithms, all these things are designed clearly. They don't need to do too much logical things, perhaps. Is it much clear? Much more clear? Okay. Thank you. And if you have some questions, don't hesitate. Thank you. See you.